because due to some technical problem now just for the checking i just want to ask someone some student can confirm me that you are listening me properly so we are going to start okay thank you so much thank you so much okay so our today's topic is uh, drug therapy of gout you know uh, gout basically the hyperuricemic state you know uh, and that is the deposition of monosodium urate crystals that is the uh, uric acid and this uric acid is in the form of monosodium urate crystals okay crystal induce basically this crystal is responsible to induce process of inflammation hyperuricemia you know hyperuricemia that is the increased level of uric acid increase uh, the crystal deposition phenomena protein binding receptor binding then cytokine that is the inflammatory uh, mediator releases cytokine and in flux of poly uh, polymorph uh, nucleosides crystal is engulfed and uh, process of phagocytosis and it will induce the process of inflammation you know in hyper uh, uricemia this is very interesting slide when there is an imbalance between production and excretion right so uh, when production is increased as compared to its excretion you know more, uh, normally uh, uric acid is filtered 90% filtered and again reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule right so if increase production but decrease excretion so it will lead to hyperuricemic state and chronic tophaceous gout tophus means localized deposit of monosodium urate crystals so if there uh, there are multiple tophus so that is why uh, it would be labeled as the tophi so you can see so the deposition of uh, urate crystals right but this is in chronic state and classic location of tophi on uh, helix of ear so cardinal manifestations uh, arthritis right uh, 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 presence of tophi and uh, this uh, deposition of uh, uric acid may lead to nephrolithiasis that means formation of stone and that will lead to nephropathy so this arthritis the one of the most important cardinal manifestation of hyperuricemia or gout and this could be arthritis could be acute and chronic so that we will see that uh, on the basis of acute attack or the case of chronic state right so our uh, treatment option would be entirely different and this is important to know whether the first will we are going to diagnose that this is the case of acute attack or uh, the case of chronic gout right so uric acid metabolism normally dietary intake that is uh, converting to purine bases or either from the uh, uh, dietary side or due to cell breakdown right so it uh, will produce purine bases right and this purine bases converted into hypoxanthine xanthine and uric acid so this is very important part right so you know uh, cell break breakdown one of the common example is uh, when we use chemotherapy right or radiotherapy so in in the in in case of cancer right so uh, this is one of the big example of this cell breakdown right so purine bases uh, ultimately converted into hypoxanthine xanthine and uric acid this is not the simple phenomena this conversion required the enzyme and what is that xanthine oxidase catalyzes hypoxanthine 
to xanthine and xanthine to uric acid. So what you must remember, the uh, this pathway that purine base is converted into hypoxanthine, that uh, that is converted into xanthine, and ultimately formation of uric acid. And this formation requires an enzyme, and that is called xanthine oxidase enzyme, which is responsible to convert hypoxanthine into xanthine and ultimately formation of uric acid. So why I'm focusing on this? Because when we are going to stop the formation of uric acid, what we are going to do, we are going to inhibit this xanthine oxidase enzyme. And this is one of the important points from the exam point of view. You must remember what are the drugs that can inhibit the activity of xanthine oxidase enzyme so we can prevent the formation of uric acid. So this, uh, you know, hyperuricemia mechanism, excessive production, but inadequate excretion. When there is any imbalance between production and excretion, Right. So one of the phenomena, one of the mechanism that already we have discussed, one of the option could be as far as the treatment is concerned, one of the option could be to decrease the formation of uric acid. Right. So this is one of the phenomena we can reduce the level of uric acid and another phenomena could be to increase or enhance the excretion of uric acid, right? So the term that we will use when we are going to enhance the excretion of uric acid by using different pharmacological agents or drug, that would be labeled as uricose uric agents. Uricose uric agents. When we say, what do you mean by uricose uric agents? your answer should be the agents or the drugs that are responsible to enhance the excretion of uric acid would be labeled as uricose uric agent. So up till now, we have two different groups that can be used in the treatment of gout. One of the group could be to inhibit the activity of xanthine oxidase enzyme, which is responsible to produce, to convert purine bases ultimately finally into uric acid. And number two, by enhancing excretion of uric acid by using uricose uric agent. Clear? So drug therapy of gout, what drugs are available for treating gout? This is important question. Treating acute gouty arthritis. So in one of the previous slide, already we have discussed that one of the important cardinal manifestation is the arthritis due to monosodium urate crystal deposition. And this arthritis could be of acute in manner and as well as in chronic. Right. So treatment of acute gouty arthritis. Okay. You know, arthritis, itis means inflammation. So inflammation in the joints. And why this inflammation occur? You know, uh, monoured sodium crystal uh, when deposited, our immune system consider that crystal as a foreign substance. Our immune system is going to be activated and try to uh, engulf that crystals, right? So uh, leukocytes, they are going to move towards that side, that is the migration, and they try to engulf that urate crystal. And by releasing cytokine, there is a process of phagocytosis. So due to, during this process, during this process of phagocytosis, due to the release of cytokine release, it will induce the inflammatory uh, phenomena due to these uh, 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 release mediators, right? So what are the drugs that we can use in acute gouty arthritis? Uh, one of the main drug is colchicine. And second, uh, NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and you are very well familiar of this group. 
right and steroids you know steroids are powerful anti inflammatory agents right when we say you know steroid uh, is a broad terminology basically uh, if we just want to more specified okay which type of steroid uh glucocorticoids or mineralocorticoids you know the anti inflammatory activity uh is due to glucocorticoids so more specifically glucocorticoids when we say steroid steroid is a broad term right rest analgesia ice and it takes time so uh this problem can be relieved so colchicin and sets steroids acute arthritic drug this is further explanation colchicin steroid and sets and urate lowering drugs allopurinol probenecid and fabus ostate so this is one of the drug that is being used nowadays commonly or effectively in the recent past allopurinol supposed to be the very important and main drug right allopurinol and one by one we will discuss its individual property like mechanism of action and what are the side effects right so but due to one of the problem related to this allopurinol is the hypersensitivity reaction so fabus ostate it's a new agent but not very much new but now this is being preferred especially in patient who, who are showing the hypersensitivity reaction against allopurinol this fabus ostate can be used right so acute attack so this is very important point acute arthritic drugs or urate lowering drugs i just want to clear this basically acute arthritic drugs this colchicin or steroid and sets what they are going to basically do they are going to control the inflammatory reaction basically they are going to produce anti inflammatory activity this is important point right and this allopurinol probenecid fabus ostate they are related to allopurinol and fabus ostate they are going to decrease production of uric acid and this probenecid act as uricose uric agent in the beginning already we have discussed two mechanism either we are going to use the drugs that can decrease the production of uric acid and number two by enhancing excretion of uric acid so this allopurinol and fabus ostate these two drugs they are going to decrease production of uric acid and this probenecid act as uricose uric agent and this colchicin and steroid and and said they are basically anti inflammatory drugs and we use in the treatment of acute attack plus rest is very important in this condition analgesia and it takes time colchicin now one by one only effective in gouty arthritis very specific drug you know why we have mentioned this word because and said anti inflammatory activity and can be used in any other condition right but this colchicin is specific for gouty arthritis right not an analgesic so this point already we have discussed right this basically this colchicin is going to prevent the and uh, process of inflammation does not affect renal excretion of uric acid i think this this point is clear already we have discussed this is not an analgesic this colchicin doesn't affect renal excretion of uric acid doesn't alter plasma solubility of uric acid neither raises nor lowers serum uric acid mechanism of action this is important how it's going to prevent or try to prevent the process of inflammation it binds to tubulin what is this tubulin a microtubular protein causing its depolymerization this disrupts cellular functions such as the mobility of granulocytes 
thus decreasing their migration into the affected area because these are the granulocytes they are trying to engulf that monosodium urate crystals and release a cytokine and the process of phag phagocytosis so this migration is prevented by inhibiting uh, tubulin activity it also blocks cell division by binding to mitotic spindles right so doses uh, or indication high doses are required in the treatment of acute gouty arthritis and low doses in the prevention of recurrent gouty arthritis this is important right so high doses so clinically this is one of the drawback you know it's it's supposed to be a very powerful drug but very interesting point that i want to share with you very important effective drug in the treatment of, of acute gouty arthritis but high doses are required so is there any problem if we use high doses yes because it can cause severe diarrhea it can cause severe diarrhea so this is one of the clinical problem right but low doses of colchicine that we cannot use in acute attack but prophylactically pro when, when the acute attack is subsided so we can put a uh, that patient on low doses of colchicine to prevent the recurrent of gouty arthritis right so what we must remember that colchicine is used in acute attack of gouty arthritis so neither is going to decrease production or in, in enhance excretion of uh, uric acid but the main function is anti inflammatory action by inhibiting uh, tubulin activity so inhibit migration of granulocytes right and also uh, inhibit the cell division right so this is the important point okay high doses are required but one of the clinical problem is what chances of or development of severe diarrhea this you must remember colchicine toxicity gastrointestinal this already we have discussed this is the main problem nausea vomiting abdominal cramping diarrhea abdominal pain discomfort is the major concern so gastrointestinal discomfort is the major concern and sometimes reasons of stopping the therapy so this point already we have discussed and another problem is problem a granulocytosis a plastic anemia thrombocytopenia but this will occur if we are using colchicine for a prolonged period of time then muscular weakness adverse effects dose related and more common when patient has renal or hepatic disease right treating acute gout what is the role of colchicine in treating acute gouty arthritis so this uh, uh, anyone because already we have discussed so this is the question what is the role of colchicine in treating acute gouty arthritis anyone anyone can quickly if able to reply me quickly what is the role of colchicine in treating acute gouty arthritis Okay, here is the answer uh, anti inflammatory activity very good anti inflammatory activity and uh, mechanism of action how is going to reduce inflammation and uh, different important points very nice okay thank you now the another drug therapy of gout drugs that block production of uric acid because you know the already why we are not discussing steroid and ansaid was discussed in the previous lectures right so that is why we are focusing on important drugs related to specific drugs related to the gout okay okay i got the answer thank you so much for your reply now drugs 
that block production of uric acid right so production of uric acid already i have mentioned two names right can anyone tell me what are the drugs two important drugs that we mentioned in the earlier slides that can decrease production of uric acid okay here is the answer allopurinol and the next one is fabus or state right fabus or state so these are the two important drugs that can okay again there is a okay thank you so much thank you so much i received the answer so uric acid metabolism uh that uh, whether from the dietary intake or from the cell breakdown purine bases they are converted into hypoxanthine xanthine and ultimately uric acid xanthine oxidase catalyzes hypoxanthine to xanthine and xanthine to uric acid so allopurinol inhibitor of uric acid allopurinol inhibitor of xanthine oxidase and effectively blocks formation of uric acid right so at the uh, two level and uh, hypoxanthine when hypoxanthine is converted into xanthine this is one of the point that hypoxanthine is not going to be converted into xanthine or it also act on xanthine is when xanthine is converted into uric acid at both level right so allopurinol inhibits xanthine oxidase enzyme right so for another important point you know allopurinol is a pro drug is a pro drug when it is converted into oxypurinol that is the active form of drug right allopurinol 90% absorption from the gut metabolized to oxypurinol once daily dosing lower serum uric acid level lowers uric acid uh, say urine uric acid level side effects are rare but potentially lethal right and that already we tells that uh, the chances of hypersensitivity reaction management of hyperuricemia of gout management of uh, hyperuricemia associated with chemotherapy right it's already we have discussed and prevention of recurrent calcium oxalate kidney stones so these are the major indications of allopurinol so gout is not the only indication for allopurinol you know and already we have discussed gout is due to uh, hyperuricemic state so this hyperuricemic state can be developed when we are treating cancer we are when we are using chemotherapy that is responsible to break down the uh, cancer cell so this uric acid level is going to increase this is important right so this is the black box warning of allopurinol allopurinol should be discontinued at the first appearance of skin rash or other sign of an allergic reaction there is a question okay so this is stevens johnson syndrome and fortunately this is not common but if it develops it's a very life threatening condition target skin lesion mucous membrane erosions and epidermal necrosis with skin detachment so this is one of the problem allopurinol should be discontinued at the first appearance of skin rash or other sign of an allergic reaction so though this is not the common problem but if it develops uh, it can it will lead to a very dangerous condition that is the stevens johnson syndrome so that is why it is recommended that at the first appearance of skin rash or other sign of an allergic reaction this drug should be discontinued and this is the reason of developing new drug right because in the past you know there is no alternative drug there is no alternative drug that can replace the allopurinol allopurinol is supposed to be the very effective only very effective drug but nowadays we have fabus 
Austate, right? So this fibrous Austate, recently approved by FDA, oral xanthine oxidase inhibitor, chemically distinct from allopurinol, minimal adverse events can be used in patient with renal disease, right? So these are the important points of fibrous Austate. And PAG uricase, this is another group. And paglotikase is a recombinant form of the enzyme urate oxidase or uricase, right? So it acts, and very interesting point, you know, this uricase enzyme, you know, animals, animals, they are not going to, they don't have uh, uh, the problem gout. Why? Only humans, they have a problem of this gout. You will not find gout in uh, mammals or mammalians like uh, in the uh, cow or all these because mam uh, mammalians have uricase enzyme, but humans, they are not having this uricase enzyme. So, uh, paglutikase is a recombinant form of the enzyme urate oxidase or uricase. It acts by converting uric acid. It acts by converting uric acid to allantoin, a water-soluble, non-toxic metabolite that is excreted primarily by the kidneys. Right? So, Treatment resistant cases, we can try this group, right? Uricase speeds resolution of top five. This is another very important effect of this uh, pagylated uricase, administered as an IV infusion every two weeks. Drugs that enhance excretion of uric acid, right? So, the drugs which are responsible to enhance the excretion of uric acid, we label as uricose uric agents. And one of the key examples of this uricose uric agent is probanisid. What it's going to do? It blocks tubular reabsorption of uric acid. So if you try to recall in the initial slide, I told you that uh, all the uric acid which is formed is filtered, right? Glomerular filtration is there. And again, this uric acid reabsorb in the proximal convoluted tubule. So when we use probanisid, what it will do, you know, in, in, in proximal convoluted tubule, there is a pump, right? There is a transporter, right, uh, for weak acid so when we uh, probanisid use this pump because uric acid also uses this pump this transporter for reabsorption but competitively probanisid acts on this pump and prevent and stop using this pump for uric acid so what will happen the uric acid is not going to reabsorb and ultimately it's going to be excreted out right Enhances urine uric acid excretion, increases urine uric acid level, and decreases serum uric acid level. Moderately effective, increase risk of nephrolithiasis. So this is one of the reason that we are not using commonly, right? This uricose uric agent. It can be used, but if we uh, mainly use it, it can be used as adjuvant therapy, as supportive therapy with the uh, decreased production of uric acid. But we cannot solely or mainly or only use this uric, uh, uricose uric agent because already we have discussed the mechanism, increased risk of nephrolithiasis. How? Because when increased amount of uric acid in the urine for the excretion, there is increased chances of precipitation of this uric acid, right? During the 
passage of excretion. So that is why increases risk of nephrolithiasis not used in patient with renal disease. Frequent but mild side effects. Some drugs reduce efficacy of this aspirin. This is very interesting for me because you know aspirin is also weak acid and it also uses this transporter or this pump which is present in the uh, proximal convoluted tubule right so and when if 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 anyone tell me this is very interesting point so aspirin weak acid and also uses uh, uh, this uh, transporter system now if anyone can recall the uh, those affected phenomena related to how aspirin can affect the excretion secretion of uric acid right because there are two phenomena you know one of the filtration of uric acid and uric acid is also secrete out from the serum into the uh, lumen of the tubule so i think you have done it now tell me there are two doses high doses of aspirin that we use uh, as anti inflammatory agent when we use aspirin as anti inflammatory agent we are required the high doses of aspirin and we are also using low doses of aspirin now anyone tell me high doses or low doses which one is responsible to enhances the excretion of uric acid and which doses decreases the secretion of uric acid so one of the answer i receive high doses of aspirin increases the uh, uric acid excretion and low doses uh, reduces uric acid excretion right so this is very uh, important point right so you are right correct answer this is very important point that can be asked in the pcq or during wiper uricose uric therapy what are the contraindications i think uh, most of the points that we can correlate what could be the contraindications history of nephrolithiasis because already we have discussed that this is one of the problem why increased chances of nephrolithiasis because when uh, reabsorption of uric acid is prevented right so increased level of uric acid in the urine so during the passage of urine outflow it can be precipitated and form uh, form the stone right so that is why if a, already if a patient having a history of nephrolithiasis or renal stone we it is better to you it is better to avoid the use of uricose uric agent an elevated urine uric acid level existing renal disease right and less effective that is why less effective in elderly patients so choosing a urine lowering drugs excessive production or inadequate excretion so uh, this is the important point xanthine oxidase inhibitors right uricose uric agent no anti inflammatory activity urate lowering therapy like fevacostate like uh, probenecid like uh, allopurinol when we say urate lowering therapy we are going to include both group the uh, group which are responsible to decrease production or the group which enhances the excretion of uh, uric acid so collectively both are responsible to decrease the urate level right so when we say urate lowering uh, agents we have both group right so these group doesn't have anti inflammatory activity so definitely if inflammation has produced so first of all we'll have to treat the process of inflammation then we can put on a uh, patient on these uh, urate ring drugs can precipitate acute gout right can prolong attack of gout right so that is why first we'll have to subside the process of inflammation then we put on the patient on uh, uh, urate lowering agents right 
so thank you so much for your cooperation for your uh, uh, enthusiasm as you have replied the answer quickly and effectively right so i think we can leave now thank you so much so here is the question thank you so much thank you so much so uh, there is a question says so you can please repeat the last point okay a very interesting question first we go for steroids colchicin or steroid okay this is very important question that you have asked normally uh, initially we practically we uh, try to use uh, and say and say right so if uh, process of acute inflammation is not being controlled uh, by the nsaid but which nsaid having the powerful anti inflammatory activity so this is very interesting question you know which nsaid can be used as a powerful anti inflammatory agent in the treatment of acute attack of gout very interesting question and this is a uh, very important question that can be asked in the uh, uh, bcq so if anyone can tell me which nsaid is supposed to be the powerful anti inflammatory drug and can be used uh, in the treatment of uh, gout you know there is a number of and uh, drugs which are included uh, in nsaid group like aspirin like diclofenac sodium like diclofenac potassium naproxen no 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 indomethacin indomethacin please remember this point indomethacin is supposed to be the <clears throat> most powerful anti inflammatory drugs but generally we do not use this drug because of its some um, serious side effects but in acute attack of gout in emergency situation because uh, to subside acute attack we are going to use indomethacin for short term use so it can be used right but normally in a routine uh, uh, practice uh, for as uh, as a routine anti inflammatory agent we do not use so it's a very powerful uh, uh, drug but in routine we do not use why because of some serious hematologic side effects right but in acute attack of gout we can use this uh, powerful indomethacin and we can try okay uh, glucocorticoids because in severe attack we even we can use generally we use the parenteral parenteral uh, glucocorticoids right so it depends on the uh, physician decision right some physician they use colchicin but colchicin is not being used uh, uh why because of already we have this point uh in the uh, beginning that it may cause severe diarrhea right severe diarrhea so because uh, the, the, there was a question why we use the eyes you know during the process of inflammation feeling of warmness right so just to relieve the warmness or pain we icing the patient right so this is the the uh, phenomena i think we should leave now thank you so much